Now, welcome to The Verdict, Kent Myers and Mick Cornett uh, coming on the air on a kind of a special show for us today. Uh, we are really uh, pleased to have a special guest, John Coyle uh, Jr., <clears throat> John Coyle III, I'm sorry, uh, who was with us uh, before, has been on uh, 14 times on right. our show. Mick, uh, what do you think about this show? I, I just can't believe we did a thing. I did some artwork. I don't know if you can see it there. I don't do artwork just for for, for uh, ordinary events. So yeah. one thousand shows. Can't congratulations. This is a this is amazing. And this show was your idea way back when. So I don't think either one of us thought there would we'd be doing this a thousand shows later. No, really, we didn't think we'd be doing ten shows later. No, I think we we passed Meet the Press and Bonanza and a lot of other fine programming. Yeah. Uh, that I think we're we're pretty much on top at this point. Yeah, now we're working toward two thousand. <laughs> there we go. I like that. And we and we do have a good show today. It's always good to have John Coyle. Of all of our guests, John's one of the best. He is indeed. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in two minutes with John Coyle and uh, the one thousandth episode of the verdict. I've always been a public servant. I've served either tribes, I've served the federal government, or I've served state governments. The law allows me to express my natural desire to advocate. My name is Stephanie Cochran. I am an attorney, and I am Chickasaw. Lawyers give their clients, and in my case, tribal governments, a voice. I mean, it's through legal decisions that tribes have been able to accomplish and to regain some much lost footing that they encountered in the late 1800s and the 1900s. When I reflect back on this time in history, I think I will look at it in terms of opportunity. And I think now we have to turn those opportunities into long-term success for our future generations. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at ProfilesOfANation.com. One of the best kept secrets about the Post-911 GI Bill benefit is that it can be used at a trade school or a technical school, and it doesn't have to be used at a university or college. These are benefits that the veterans have earned through their service, and they should take advantage of it. Veterans really need to understand that there are many resources offered by the Oklahoma Department of Veteran Affairs. They are there to help you find the right school for you the school that will help you and your family make great steps into your future. Welcome back to The Verdict, Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. Uh, uh, very pleased today to be bringing to you our 1000th show. Uh, it's a pleasure for us, uh, kind of a, a nice milestone, uh, although the only reason we have been able to do such a thing is because we have great guests that you appreciate watching just like the guest we have today. His name is John Coyle. John Coyle was on our first show uh, over uh, 19 years ago uh, and was good enough to come back. This, by the way, is only his 14th appearance with us. Uh, he, John did his undergraduate work and law work at Oklahoma City University. He's been in the private practice of law for 47 years. Uh, he is primarily specialized in criminal defense work and uh, quite frankly has represented most of the folks in the very high profile cases that you'd be familiar with. He's very well thought of and is quite an accomplished lawyer. Uh, he is a staunch defender of the accused and, and of civil liberties. Uh, and he is a, a vigorous defender of anybody that he uh, chooses to represent. Uh, he's won many honors and accolades, uh, but uh, anybody that, is, that you ask in the practice of law in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, frankly, about who's the best criminal lawyer in Oklahoma, John will be among the names mentioned, if not on the top. He's been on the top of my list for 47 years. Uh, John, sure glad to have you back. Well, thank you very much, Ken. I, I, uh, uh, and congratulations 
to you guys on such a good show and such a long run. I mean, things don't run that long if they're not good. I, I, uh, you gave us a you gave us a good start. Well, thank you. I'm honored when I'm here, and um, it's just a lot of fun to, and I enjoy visiting with you and Mick. So, um, uh, Mick, where are we? Well, you were, John was joined on that first show by State Representative John Nance. John could not return for this 1,000th show. We wish him well. And if you'll go back in time to the spring of 2001, it was some six years after the Oklahoma City bombing. Tim McVeigh had been executed. Terry Nichols had been found guilty but was still alive on those federal charges. And there was a broad discussion, at least in Oklahoma, about whether or not state charges should be brought against Terry Nichols. And that's where we brought John Coyle in. He had opinions on that. Your first mission is to make sure the trial is fair. What do you think about this? Can uh, Terry Nichols receive a fair trial in Oklahoma? I sure don't think so. And I think that in all the times that I've been involved in jury selection, which is not only my job to see that the trial's fair, but particularly the prosecution's job <clears throat> as well, in all the cases that I've been involved in, the people who are Oklahomans involved in juries try very hard to be fair. There could be changes from Congress. We already are experiencing a moratorium on the death penalty, which could affect McVeigh's trial or his situation. And there's always a question of appeals. So there's a lot of things that could change the situation as we see it in the federal case for McVeigh and uh, Terry Nichols. And I just don't think we ought to take that risk. John, you want well, to respond briefly? Yes, I, I think this business about it being a risk is hogwash. It's not a risk. Can the trial be fair to Terry Nichols here in Oklahoma? Kent, I believe it can be. Uh, those statistics show 46.6 and then 46.5, yes and no. So it's a slight margin. But with the challenges that are available to uh, defense attorneys and to the prosecution, I think that they'll be able to find a jury that can uh, weigh the facts in the trial and give a fair trial to Terry Nichols. And we're back uh, with a little uh, nostalgia from <laughs> uh, 2001. I thought it was very appropriate, uh, John, that for you and Mick and I to start this this show on April 1st, April Fool's Day. Yeah. Uh, we kind of felt like that at the time we were doing the show. But uh, you gave us such a great start that uh, we couldn't fail after that. Um, that show was about Terry Nichols and should he be retried. Uh, and with the state seeking the death penalty, and you had uh, some strong views about it. Can you just kind of look back on the Terry Nichols situation uh, and uh, tell us what has happened since then and what is the situation now? Well, of course, um, he was tried, and the case was moved to McAllister. And uh, Judge Steve Taylor, uh, who was later on the Supreme Court and is now retired, and um, who is also a runner. I see him all the time downtown here. Uh, he uh, And he's an avid watcher of the verdict. He claims to have watched every show we've ever done, which is amazing because <laughs> I haven't done that. But go ahead. Well, good. I'd love to be on here with him. I love to debate with him. Uh, uh, he's a brilliant man, and um, uh, he, he prides himself, and there's no question he should on giving people a fair trial. He gave Jerry Nichols a fair trial and the jury gave him a sentence of life without parole. So he's now uh, in Florence, Colorado in a high max security prison. There. So it's, it's a big place. It's, uh, I read it only has 375 or so inmates. In it. Well, there was concern at the time expressed by John Nance that that he was concerned and others apparently were concerned that somehow Terry Nichols, Terry Nichols might get out. Doesn't look like he's done very well at that up to this point. No, he's not getting out. When you receive life in the federal system, it means life. So uh, he's not going to get out at any point in time. Um, 
but he got a real fair trial. And, um, that's kind of the end of the saga after all these years. Um, I might uh, remind our viewers, and then I'll make thought to you after this if I can, but I might uh, remind our viewers that, uh, as you explained in our first show, you were contacted about uh, representing Tim McVeigh by the federal court, the Judge well, David sir, and I, I represented uh, Tim McVeigh for about 45 days, and I had a number of friends who had died in the bombing. So um, I, I really wanted probably more than anything in my life to represent him in the case. And uh, I remember staying up with my wife uh, most of the night. It was probably about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I said, I just can't do it. And I remember uh, we were crying together. Uh, um, I, I'm... I really wanted to do that, you know. I like to I spend my whole life helping people in trouble. And he was in more trouble than about anybody I'd ever seen. So mm -hmm. it was a big moment and a big time in, uh, yeah. in my life. But I represented him in the prim preliminary hearing. Um, all those things, I um, spent uh, many, many hours with him, just he and I, visiting well, about it in his predicament. John, since then, there's been, uh, you know, a number of, uh, of programs done about uh, the bombing and the trial, and it's, you know, it's been nationally documented. And uh, it is probably more than a casual viewer of how pop culture and the, the, the news has placed this event into history. What are your thoughts when you see people trying to, uh, to put a perspective on what happened in downtown Oklahoma City? Well, it's hard to put a perspective on it. I mean, the times, uh, the atmosphere um, uh, was very, everyone was very nervous, very uh, distraught over what happened. It was very difficult. And uh, kids that died, different people, it was a, it was a tough atmosphere all the time. Um, about um, Tim McVeigh, it was um, it was a time unlike really any other, kind of like the time we're in now. Um, it's a different, but a feeling of loss and devastation, and why us, why he. Um, it was a very interesting time in court with him too. I, I, um, uh, I look back on uh, the first time I met him was at Tinker. John, let me, let me interrupt. I'm sorry to have to do that. Keep All that right. thought. We're going to have to go to a break, but where I make where I'd like to come back to and we get out of that is, is uh, that Tinker story. And uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, folks, you're watching The Verdict with Mick Cornett and Kent Myers and John Coyle. We'll be right back. OU Law has a history and heritage that are unparalleled. At the University of Oklahoma College of Law, we empower our students to pursue the career of their dreams. We have the highest U.S. news ranking ever achieved by an Oklahoma law school. We are the first law school in the country to launch a college-wide digital initiative. And this year, our competition teams rank number two in the nation. OU Law, generations of excellence, limitless possibilities. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. 
Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. That's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Welcome back to The Verdict, uh, Kent Myers and Mick Cornett uh, celebrating our 1,000th show of The Verdict uh, with a, a guest on our very first show, John Coyle. Uh, Mick, where are we here? Well, uh, it's our 1,000th show, hard to believe it. John Coyle is back with us. And John, you were mentioning that back in 1995, for some period of time, you were representing Tim McVeigh. Can you go through what you remember? Well, sure. I mean, of course, I remember every about every minute of it. I um, I was asked to go to Tinker and uh, to represent him, and I went to Tinker. Um, and when I pulled in, it was in a huge hangar, and I pulled in there, and I saw an FBI agent who had been involved in Waco. Um, and I knew he'd been involved in the tragedy there where essentially um, a lot of men, a lot, a lot of men and women and children died um, that shouldn't have. And I, th I thought it was really ironic uh, when I saw him and uh, they led me up to a, uh, an area there, a huge office. Um, in Tinker, and uh, that's where I met alone um, with Tim McVeigh, and Susan Otto was there with me then. And uh, it was a very interesting time, an interesting meeting. He didn't know, really, he looked like a deer in headlights, you know, at that point. But after that, I got to visit with him a lot. We went to court that day, and um, then they had court at Tinker, and then the next time we went to court, we did it in the penitentiary at El Reno, uh, the federal penitentiary there. But they opened it up where people could come because, of course, you're entitled to always have a public hearing. No, they were, don't, were supposedly don't have secret hearings. Mm -hmm. um, so everything's done in public. And I demanded that everything be done in public concerning him. And uh, uh, it was an interesting time to uh, cross-examine the agents um, who came on the stand. And we spent most of the day, as I recall. Ron Howland, who is now retired as a U.S. magistrate, was a judge. And uh, that was a big day. Uh, and... When I, when I look back on the seriousness of it and uh, just the whole, the whole event, it was quite a time in my life. Well, let me uh, ask you to kind of fast forward to the current time now, John. Uh, um, in Oklahoma and elsewhere, there's a lot of emphasis on criminal justice reform. Obviously, you have spent a good part of your professional career dealing with criminal justice uh, and trying to bring it about. Um, do you have any uh, thoughts about uh, the current situation on the, uh, both in Oklahoma and perhaps beyond on criminal justice reform? Well, I have a lot of thoughts on it. I mean, it's, uh, it's always been racist, always. And uh, anybody, and it's not that anybody in particular in the system wants it to be that way. It's the way it works because of socioeconomics, uh, attitudes. And I, uh, I can't believe that in our lifetime that we're fortunate enough to see it change. And it can change. And it's got to. And... Uh, uh, out, of, out of the tragic death of George Floyd might come some real 
new justice in our country. Um, the, um, the police, uh, as we have seen time and again, uh, they do a lot of talking about changing, but they don't change. Um, their attitude toward citizens is not good in this country, uh, no matter what they tell you. It's not good, and it should change. They uh, treat minorities like dirt, um, and we got to have a different time. And when they talk about defunding police, uh, I'm in favor of changing their funding, where there's more money for interaction and programs, where they can get to know the people they uh, police and vice versa, where there's more interaction with the citizens on a basis, not a confrontational basis. But so you can see the police officers are friends, uh, are good people. Many of them are my friends. But the way the, the, the dynamic has evolved over the years, it's gotten worse and worse. And people of color everywhere in our country are scared of them. They don't respect them. Uh, they don't like them coming around. They are afraid anytime they're in their presence. And that doesn't happen um, to white people like that. Um, it's time to change. And it's probably one of the best moments in my life to see this change, but it requires everybody mm -hmm. in criminal justice reform. It requires the law, all the lawyers, the prosecutors, the police. Everybody's got to get in it. And I'm telling you, the citizens will respond very favorably to it when it comes. Very and favorably. It'll John, be what's ahead for you personally? Do, do criminal defense attorneys ever retire? Uh, no, I mean, I've talked to some lawyers about that. How do you retire? And I've talked to one who's retired three times um, <laughs> the other day. So um, You'd be a boxer. I'm, yeah, I'm only 72. Yeah. And uh, I still like um, going to court. Uh, I still like working. And, um, you know, I stayed home during the COVID time, of course. I had an office at home. And I worked in it some, and uh, I really enjoyed being at home. And I thought, boy, I've got a home office. This is really going to work. And so since um, May and sometime, I've been back downtown. And I, I don't know, somehow my car comes down here every day. <laughs> and uh, it won't go anywhere else. So um, I guess I'm going to be here. Um, um, I guess I got three years, three and a half years, and I'll have 50 years as a lawyer. Um, and I may consider it then. Well, John, uh, you have been the leading criminal defense lawyer in Oklahoma, at least, for um, as long as I can remember, and that's as long as you've been around. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on again and uh, joining us in this happy day of a thousand shows, which would not have been possible had you not uttered those famous words that our folks saw on the clip, hogwash. Uh, you, that has been my favorite mo mo moment in all of our shows, uh, not, just, not just recently. So thanks again for coming. Mick and I appreciate it. And uh, folks, we'll be right back well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, John. It used to be okay in hospitals. It used to be okay in movie theaters. It was okay in classrooms, restaurants, and airplanes. But thanks to a greater understanding of the dangers, that's not okay anymore. So now that we know secondhand smoke causes lifelong health problems, why is it still okay to smoke with children in the car? Bottom line, it's not okay.
Let's get serious about protecting kids. Join the fight at StopsWithMe.com. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. I think for us, once we got started and we began to see the tremendous need um, just within our state, um, it really was just a calling for us. The blessings far outweigh any obstacles that we've faced. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Welcome back to The Verdict. Kent Myers and Mick Cornett closing up our 1,000th show with our special guest, John Coyle. Uh, Mick? Well, John's always a good guest. And on, on this occasion of our 1,000th show, let me, pull up, let me show up my artwork again. <laughs> there, upside you. Down? there we go. That's upside uh, down. Some website information on, on John Coyle. You can get in touch with him at coyllaw.com. And we have a website, theverdict.tv. Yeah, and we want to thank, uh, Mick and I want to thank all the folks that have been part of the, the crew and the cast uh, for this show for, uh, for many years now, over 19. Thanks. We couldn't have done it without you. You've been watching The Verdict. We'll see you next week. <laughs>